Christ Community Church and C3 Media presents the Deeper Dive Podcast. Pastor Dina and Pastor Mitch are about to take you on a deeper dive into the Bible. So here is your host, Pastor Dina Harder. Yay! Love it. Just I keep getting off of that intro. Our producer did such a great job getting that together. So this is Pastor Dina here with Pastor Mitch. Hey, everybody. I am so excited about today's podcast. We got lots of good stuff. Yeah. But it's a special moment. You want to tell us why? Well, from what our producer just told us, we passed actually on our last episode was episode 25. 25. Wow. Can so, you believe it? 25. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah. That's awesome. So just a big shout out to Don. He's so amazing yes. and putting yes. this all together. So yes. thank yes. you, Don. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that you all have been enjoying these as much as we've been enjoying putting them together and what we're doing here. And so we are going to be diving again into spiritual gifts, the supernatural spiritual gifts. And before we get into today's, which will be the verbal gifts, I want to go back because I realized after the last podcast that I forgot to bring up a story that I just love that really ties into the gift of faith, which is one of what groups? We talked about the different groups of <laughs> power, power gifts. Yes. Well, some of mine went blank. I couldn't think of anything. Have you ever read that? Your mind go blank? But I blame mine on age. I don't know what you blame yours on. I blame mine on age. <laughs> that works. So, yeah, last episode, our 25th episode, we talked about power gifts. And one of those is the gift of faith. And before that podcast, we had actually talked about this gentleman, a father of faith, a general in the faith, George Mueller. And he was alive in the early 1800s. And he was known uh, for establishing orphanages in Bristol, England. And I, after I was studying a little bit more about him, he had five or- orphanages that he established there. And he had over 10 thousand children that he took care of in those orphanages before he died so I'm assuming that even more children were cared for after but that's just incredible to me um, to know that he was able to help that many children but going back to the story of faith and the, this man had such a gift of faith every time I hear the story about him there's part of me that just goes why didn't you ask for help you know like why didn't you do what we think but anyhow going back to this um, it, it's documented over and over again about the the gift of faith that he had that he knew God would provide so much so that he refused to ask for help. He would only go to God when there was a need. And I remember this one story, and I have to say what I remember it best from, which is Adventures in Odyssey. So I have to put this out there for you parents who are looking for good content for your kids to listen to and something that the whole family will enjoy because I can tell you my husband and I enjoy it as much as my son did when we listened to it in the cars but it's a program called adventures in odyssey and i think it was put out by focus on the family wasn't it so i'm sure it's still out there somewhere but in this uh adventure they would go back in time and visit different biblical things that happened or people in faith events in faith and one of them was george mueller and they told this story in that where there was uh, one, and I'm sure it was probably of many times, where they went to sit down at the table, it would be George Mueller, all the kids, and the table was empty. Uh, it was breakfast table, completely empty, and he would say, okay, we're going to sit here, we're going to thank God for the food that we're about to receive, but there was nothing there. And so they did this and sat back and I just can't even imagine sitting there and looking at all these kids looking at you saying okay how are we going to eat and uh, then there was a knock at the door and he went over to the door and here was this milkman who had been driving now again this is we didn't have stores back then so you had a milkman that did deliveries his truck I think got a flat tire and so he had all this milk he said can you help me I have all this milk that's going to spoil and go bad I don't know what to do with it can you use it 
there was their milk. And then I don't know if you remember, but I just know that shortly thereafter, there was another knock at the door and it was a baker. And I don't remember what it was, but he had all this extra bread that was going to go bad if they didn't use it. So all of a sudden, these children, everybody there had this wonderful breakfast that God provided. What a gift of faith. Yeah. Well, oh. Yeah, imagine just sitting at this room full, filled with people and there's not a drop of food. And you're believing God. You're going to thank, you just thanked him for the food that you did not have. Yeah. Your plates were all empty sitting yeah. before you. Yeah. But knowing God would provide. And he didn't do that just one time, but he did it over and over again. And God continued to provide. I read where he also personally because of the bookkeeping they did for the gifts that came in that he personally had given over the course of his ministry life over a quarter of a million dollars George wow. Mueller gave to those orphans. Wow. You know why mm. orphans are so important in the mind of God? Go ahead. James 127 tells us that this is pure and undefiled religion mm -hmm. to visit the orphans and widows in their distress. Yeah. And to keep oneself unstained or unspotted from the world. Yeah. Orphans are a huge, huge... Uh, yeah. factor in the heart of God. Yeah, yeah. He loves children, and he says, in fact, don't hinder the children from coming unto me. In fact, when we talk about orphanages, we've been to orphanages all over the world. I was in Africa to an orphanage, in Romania to an orphanage. I was to one in Ecuador. So I used to say it's just close to the heart of God for orphans, yeah. which reminds me, another thing is the uh, Big Brother, Big Sister program in, uh, here in our area is looking for people that will just fill in for kids that have... Mm -hmm. Uh, bad home life or they're abandoned by their dads or whatever they just need you know big brothers big sisters and i think that's a tremendous way yeah. to sort of like get to know kids and be a be a help mm -hmm. to them and i think they only ask for you to get with the kids for like an hour or a week most yeah. people say can i do it a yeah. little bit longer than that yeah. so um yeah so i'm sure wherever you're listening to that especially if it's anywhere in the united states and you're hearing this uh just check out locally in your area there's probably a big brother big sister program there it's good. So, so there's a lot, lot going on. Yeah, but I just want to encourage you with the gift of faith because we talked about different areas where you can see it used. Uh, we talked about that in the last podcast, but this one just really, to me, brings it home. It's near and dear to my heart, and most of all, near and dear to the heart of God. It's good. So let's get into today's podcast, which is talking about the verbal gifts. So just a little... Um, review we're talking about the supernatural spiritual gifts of the holy spirit that are listed in first corinthians 12 and we've read this the past couple times you can read 7 through verse 11 it talks about the different gifts and and we've grouped them and oftentimes people group them as they're teaching on them into the revelatory gifts the power gifts and now today the verbal gifts. So before I read that section, I wanted to just share, I heard this this morning on one of my devotionals, and just to reiterate how important it is to God, the words we speak. And so I think the verbal gifts, even though all the gifts are important, they all have an important place in the body of believers, but to know that there that what we say, what we speak, holds great significance. And we can we could talk many episodes just about that. But I'm just going to share the scripture. It's in Psalms 81, verse 10. So get your Bibles out. Get ready. We're going deep. But I'm going to read this in the Passion Translation. And just actually the last part of that verse. It says, Open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it now. You'll see. The words that you speak, so shall it be. So God says to us that what we speak, what comes out of our mouth, is significant. In fact, he addresses it again in James about the power of the tongue. Yep. <laughs> and so just knowing, you know, our words hold a lot of power. So it's really important that we give those to God and say, God, I want my words. I want what comes out of my mouth to line up with what you say, what your word says. That's really good. You know, I was thinking, I'm just kind of going to tease a little bit about verbal gifts. 
I was going to say, you know, it's really easy for women, verbal gifts. Oh. But honestly, oh. but honestly, <laughs> did you know they did a survey? Men talk more than women. They talk about the number of words uh-huh. used per day. Uh-huh. Uh, they're just about even. It's not as one-sided as you guys like to think it is. Men talk just as much as women. And then if you add a pastor to that mix... Man, he's way over the top with the. <laughs> so when you talk about so when you talk about verbal gifts, as Christians, we are known to talk quite a bit. But I think what you're saying, which is what we're trying to get to in this podcast, is your talk needs to be more spiritual. Yes. Not natural, and yes. you need to guard where your conversation goes at mm-hmm. times because you can create a destiny or create fruit mm-hmm. of your lips that you don't want to eat of. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, because I just, as we were talking before this, when we speak, the words that come out of our mouth either line up with God's word or (laughs) they don't, which means they're of the flesh or agreeing with the devil. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to agree with the devil. I want to agree with God because there's power in agreement where two or more agree, it shall be done. That's God's word. Plus, we read this uh, book that you, uh, I guess, Pastor Rose had called mm-hmm. The Veil. Mm-hmm. And uh, they talk about the power of words attracts or repels demons. Mm-hmm. The power of words releases the Spirit of God or hinders the Spirit of God. I mean, the partnership we have with the Lord, we're creating His image. And speech is the way that God created things. God spoke and things came yeah. into being. Yeah. So because we are created in His image, when we speak... We have the same creative force coming out. And then when you become a believer, uh, it's even more potent because you have the spirit of God living inside of you, speaking yes. through you. So therefore, you have these incredible opportunities to change the destinies of people. That's a familiar mm. f- of, of topic we've had lately. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I think, you know, just as you're saying that, then to go to the next level when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and you're operating in these spiritual gifts that we're going to talk about, then there's even more power that flows through the words you speak when you're speaking what is on God's heart. So going back to 1 Corinthians 12 and looking in verse 10, that's where it talks about the gifts. And today we're looking at what it says Uh, that God gives gifts to another prophecy, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And remember, this is all given for the common good. So when we are exercising spiritual gifts, when we're moving in these things, it is for the good of others and the good of the church, the good of the body of believers. I think that's so critical for our understanding is that when you talk about spiritual gifts, there's several scriptures that come to mind, but one is I've got in Acts 18 where it talks about a man that loved Jesus. I mean, there was no doubt he sincerely had an encounter with Jesus mm-hmm. named uh, Apollos. And Apollos came to the city of Ephesus, which is a city given to idolatry, mm-hmm. and he began to proclaim the mighty things of God. And he has a man that says, eloquent in speech, it said he was mighty in scripture, he understood these things. But it says that he only taught the things that he knew, which is what I call being like a fundamentalist. He talked about Jesus rising from the dead and the baptism of John, which are about repentance. And that's where it all starts. It all starts with repentance. Mm -hmm. But there is so much more to a relationship with God than just always thinking about your shortcomings and your faults and your failures. Right. That's what repentance is. I made a mistake. I said something wrong. I acted wrong. I thought wrong. I looked at wrong things. You repent for those things. You turn from those things. But that's not what your relationship with God is based on. Your relationship with God is based upon the incredible amount of love that he has for you and that he wants to Mm -hmm. treat you not just as a servant, not just as a family member, but as a close, intimate relative. He wants you to be his son or his daughter. And because of that, a lot of times I think people have these walls built up and so they don't know the ways of God accurately. And it says that two people there, Aquila and Priscilla, Mm -hmm. took this mighty man of God aside, Apollos, and they said they shared with him the ways of God, listen to this, more accurately. Mm Now, what was it about his, he said he was accurate, but he wasn't giving the full accuracy. He wasn't giving the full picture. And mm-hmm. so in our in our view, our, our 
where we're at and if you read this in acts 18 let's just look at that just for real quick i think you'll find it's just to me it's just interesting when you catch these stories in the bible of true you know stuff going on like in acts 18 verse 24 it says now there was a certain jew named apollos who had been born in alexandria which is in egypt mighty educated city an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So this guy knew the word. This is important. I would say for a lot of Christians today, they don't know the word, but know mm-hmm. the word. He goes on to say, this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and began and being fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he only knew the baptism of John. We talk about repentance. Mm-hmm. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. It says, when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. So here's the humility. The guy's mighty in power, eloquent speaker. He didn't get all puffed up going, who are you to tell me? He listened to Aquila and Priscilla, listened to their words of wisdom, said, you know what? I, I understand there's more. And this is what excites me about today's uh, podcast. There is so much more about God for us to learn. There yes. are so many more adventures for us to be with him and to explore with him and to understand him there's so much depth that he has for us to walk into mm-hmm. and to me it's just an exciting moment so aquila and priscilla knew more things took apollos aside began to share mm-hmm. with him it says the way of god more accurately yeah. in our understanding that's the baptism in the holy spirit mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about spiritual gifts they began to explain to him you're a mighty man. You've got great preaching. You've got great skills. Mm-hmm. But there's a depth of God you haven't experienced called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They began to share with him, and then he got it. He went mm-hmm. on and continued to preach, teach, and minister. But he was fully equipped, and that's what we're wanting to do with you through this podcast, fully equip you to be used in the way of God more accurately so that when you're out ministering to people or you've got things in your own home or things in your own life, you can fight the good fight and you can win. That's important to me. You got to win. Mm, I like that victory. That's right. That's my word for the year, victory. So it's good. And we have that in Jesus. So looking at that, and we're going to jump into the first of the list of, well, actually tongues and interpretation of tongues. We're going to hold prophecy to our next podcast because there's really a lot to say about that uh, too. But so this one, we're going to talk about tongues interpretation of tongues go ahead do you have a thought oh are you just divisive i is that it is that it you're gonna be divisive again talk about those tongues i'm bringing it up that's what we're talking about (laughs) you said uh again uh, during preparation that they say that's the most controversial of the gifts yeah it seems like you have a lot of people that say i like spiritual gifts Mm -hmm. but i'm not going to speak in tongues you are not going to catch me (laughs) speaking in those tongues it's like like i think most people have this fear that they're going to have like an epileptic seizure and they're going to be frozen and they're going to have this like fall down the middle of an aisle at Walmart and you're going to have just got to blab it away this gibberish. <laughs> and I feel like it's such it's such a uh, rebuke to the nature of God. Yeah. You think yeah. your Heavenly Father would do that? Do you, do you think your father you would? No. I mean, that's a no. But right. then we also talk about this. I think we've discovered it before, but the University of Pennsylvania, they did a study on people oh. with glossolalia that began to speak in tongues and they put them up they put all the little uh electrodes on their brain mm-hmm. and they began to program in, in labs as people would speak in tongues because they couldn't figure out mm-hmm. well the bible will look at this the bible says it's your spirit praying but what part of your brain is activated because speech is controlled by the brain so when you pray in tongues what's going on mm-hmm. well they found out the part of your brain that doesn't control speech it's what's activated and they're like they were just going nuts with how does this work the <laughs> part of your brain that doesn't control speech is activated as you pray in tongues mm-hmm. so to clarify just with what you're saying (laughs) is that yeah as we're praying in tongues it's a different part of the brain that would actually light up not the part that controls your verbal speech so there's something going on uh, when you're praying in tongues so if i understand it correctly this will help all you doubters (laughs) out there listen to this It's the right side of your brain that controls your speech. So you're in your right mind when you pray in tongues. Just wanted to let you know that's how it goes. When you begin to pray in tongues, it's the right side of your brain that's programming your speech. I just opened the door for that one, didn't I? (laughs) And you just walked right in. That's part of the joy. So I'm saying, so so speaking in tongues has a lot of controversy, Mm -hmm. but 
because it's such a powerful gift. Now, I've heard this too. You can you can comment on this that speaking in tongues is the least of the gifts. I don't think the Apostle Paul says that. <laughs> no, he doesn't. That that is a lie straight from the pit of hell to try to dissuade people that we well, can mm-hmm. have spiritual gifts with those tongues. No, that's not. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, it is. If life and death are in the power of the tongue, as mm-hmm. you said in your opening monologue, why would we not want to have our tongue controlled by the Holy Spirit? That's right. And even just looking at you were talking about Apollo. So if you go on into chapter 19. And uh, it said they were, you know, the Apostle Paul was there and encountered some of the disciples of Apollos then who hadn't received the Holy Spirit because Apollos had just learned about it. And so it said he prayed for the people in verse 6. There you go. Um, it said when he placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Yeah. So and you will see that all through the book of Acts especially because that's when the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out that's Pentecost as it fell on people it said they spoke in other tongues and you continue to see that throughout the early church and as we talked in our last episodes um, you know a couple uh, episodes ago we went through how speaking in tongues the gift of the Spirit has not ceased it is for today you know, I'm really glad you brought that up because there's there's a point here that I think part of my background is that I was probably more like Apollos. Knew the way of the Lord, knew about repentance, the baptism of John. The Apostle Paul comes along, finds these believers, lays hands on them, they receive the Holy Spirit. That's what happened to me. I had a similar experience to me. So it's always been funny to me, the Baptist boy, <laughs> that ever since I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I get in these circles and all these people with all these questions, doubts, concerns, fears, frustrations about speaking in tongues. The Baptist boy gets to defend speaking in tongues. I don't know, it just strikes me as funny <laughs> because I did not grow up Pentecostal. I did not grow up charismatic. I did not was not raised mm-hmm. in that environment. Mm-hmm. So everything that I'm sharing with you or through life experiences, having to learn how to communicate with people of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, why it's essential, why it's critical to your success and your growth as a believer, why you want to have these gifts. And I'm just telling you, living in a college town, yep. we prize the intellect above the spirit. We, mm-hmm. we value the mind. And all I can tell you is that the Bible is very clear. A natural man, a man who sets his mind mm-hmm. on the things of the flesh, cannot walk in the spirit, and he cannot please God. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking about spiritual gifts, we're talking about things that your Heavenly Father has given to you to help you become the man or woman of God that He destined you to be. Yeah, and I think as you're sharing that, just to say that, you know, you don't throw your mind out the door or out the window whenever you're talking about spiritual gifts. That's why we're taking you through the scriptures. We are diving into the Word of God to see what He says because it's there. If you have a question, go to the Word of God, go to the source, go to God, the Holy Spirit, um, and the, the answers are there. So one of the evidences of going through the scriptures, mm-hmm. when you read through the book of Acts, five different times people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. In every instance, we can prove it through other scriptures too, the people spoke in tongues. Yeah. The baptism in the Holy Spirit was evidenced by the speaking in tongues. So when someone comes to me and says, I'm filled with the Spirit, but I don't speak in tongues, I'm not making a theological debate with them, mm-hmm. but I'm saying to you, you're missing out on such a blessing yeah. to realize if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues is the overflow. It's the outflow mm-hmm. of that experience. Yeah. And to realize a lot of times for people like that, because I've prayed for many people, what's holding them back from that is fear. And it's fear of what you said, like, what's going to happen to me? Is the Holy Spirit going to overtake me? And I'm just going to start speaking in tongues that, you know, in the middle of whatever. And that's not the nature of God. I like that you said that we have to look at the giver of the gifts. He is good. And his desire is to draw all men unto him, men and women, but that all mankind would be saved. That's the heart of God. And that's why we use spiritual gifts. So when we talk about spiritual gifts, specifically speaking in tongues, yeah. we can see all throughout the scriptures where the, when the person got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul in Acts 8, the house of Cornelius in Acts 10, you can go through this, uh, the uh, people in Samaria in Acts 8, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul in chapter 9, 
House of Cornelius in chapter 10, all three of these examples were people, not even the upper room in Acts 2, right. uh, as were the people in Acts 19. This is where all the five examples are, people being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they received tongues. They got the tongues. They received a download. Why is that? Because speaking in tongues is the gateway between the unseen and the seen. Ah, it's good. Words, like when you speak... I don't know what's on your mind you begin to speak. Now, there's a lot on your mind. I think there's a lot yes, on her there mind. Yes, there is. There's a lot on her mind. A lot of good stuff. And sometimes you don't <laughs> want to hear everything that's on. But I'm saying for me, I know that I get this criticism all the time. I've been known to talk. That's why I got developed jaws. But the point <laughs> is, is that your speech reveals what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. It reveals the unseen or the hidden things. Mm -hmm. And your speech, if it's controlled by the Holy Spirit, you begin to release this and this or the mind of God into that situation. Yeah. That's good. Because yeah, it says it's the Holy Spirit praying through us. So instead of us speaking out of our mind and our little bit of understanding, the Holy Spirit prays through us and we're praying the actual heart of God into situations. No, I mean, what a joy to be able yeah. to just think that I can partner with God, that he would allow me. I'm just taking just a moment because I'm, I'm to, to, that God would allow me to speak for him. Yeah, it's humbling very uh god has so much faith in you because hmm. i don't have faith wow. in me but god has faith in you and that's just unbelievable yeah, that's good yeah so as we're speaking about this and getting into the gift of tongues it's actually different what we're talking about in first corinthians 12 yeah, 12. Sorry, I was flipping my Bible pages because we'll get to 1 Corinthians 14 in a moment. So put your finger there. But in 1 Corinthians 12, in these spiritual gifts, it says about different kinds of tongues. Now, is that the same as baptism of the Holy Spirit and tongues? Well, this is a great question, and you can interpret it a lot of different ways. My mm -hmm. personal feeling is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is not diversities of tongues that are recorded in 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, 1 Corinthians 12 is listing gifts that you would use, if you would, in service to the church. Mm -hmm. Whereas being baptized in the Holy Spirit is all about you getting a fullness or having a measure of the Spirit of God living in your life, which is a whole different, you're part of the body of Christ, but mm -hmm. you are not entirely the body of Christ by yourself. Well, and I think too, for the speaking in tongues that comes from just the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's something we can do all the time. I can, I can tell you in college, especially, I would pray in tongues while I was taking my exams. <laughs> and uh, no cheating, one around, cheating, yeah, exactly, cheating. wisdom of God. So, um, but I can do it under my breath the same way you can pray you know, I can pray in English under my breath, too. So we all can pray in tongues. And in fact, the Apostle Paul says he desires that we would do that. Um, so that is different than the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are poured out a lot of times for an occasion, a purpose in that moment. You know, I start praying in tongues, say, in a service. Did you know I was uh, just told by this guy here at Penn State University that one of the classes they teach in business was in order to clear your mind, they want you to sit by yourself for a few seconds, a few minutes, and just speak gibberish. <laughs> and if you speak <laughs> gibberish, that. it cleans your, clears your mind. Well, you're not speaking gibberish no. when you pray in the Spirit. But it right. does clear your mind. It gets rid of all the fog, of all the stuff. Maybe you're stressed about something. Maybe mm -hmm. you worried you got fear anxiety maybe got dread maybe you're got anger unforgiveness and i'm just telling you praying in the spirit for me has been a lifesaver yeah to pray so yeah when we talk about praying in the spirit coming back to that though i think it needs to be very un well understood to pray in the spirit listen to the word praying in the spirit mm -hmm. you're not talking in the spirit in terms of talking to another person you're praying in the spirit to what? To the Lord. Yes. So we like to divide it up as to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues is a prayer language. We like to use mm -hmm. the word prayer language. That's good. We like to talk about praying in diverse tongues as a speech that you give in the church or in a public place mm -hmm. to minister to people. Yeah. So I hope we're not 
making you even more confused. Um, but just trying to give a little um, discernment on the difference as you see it in Scripture and what the gifts of the Spirit, the supernatural gifts are, uh, and you see these happening a lot in the body of Christ when we're talking about the verbal gifts of the Spirit. Yes. So you have so you have the verbal gifts of the Spirit. We'll go through it again. Is tongues and the interpretation of tongues mm-hmm. and prophecy. Yeah. And we'll move prophecy off to a separate category because it's so yeah. it's got so many cool things to it. But tongues, interpretation of tongues. So we're saying every person can, if they so choose, to partner with the Holy Spirit, you can pray in tongues. Yep. Yeah, with your prayer language. With your prayer language. Mm -hmm. You can speak with the Spirit. Uh, The Spirit gives you utterance. Uh, We also feel like that this is unknown. I had a friend named Rosie Greer who told me he was with a man by the name of Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts, one of the great generals of the Pentecostal movement, Mm -hmm. great man of God, faith. And Rosie Greer was a football player. He was a former football player. Even here at Penn State, he played professional football, the fearsome foursome. He was actually, he always tells his testimony, he was there when Robert Kennedy was shot by Sirhan Sirhan on the Democratic really? floor in California. Told me the whole story. In fact, wow. Rosie stepped in and prevented people from beating that man to death and took the gun and put it in his coat pocket that was shot Robert Kennedy. Wow. But he was praying in the spirit then. But he was, no, he wasn't saved <laughs> then. Wasn't then. He got wow. saved, got right with God. So wow. he came to our campus. I spent three days with him, had a great time. But Rosie was always like, when I would pray in tongues, Rosie would always stop me and go, what'd you just say? I'd be like, I don't know. He goes, you can interpret, interpret what you're saying, because that's what Oral Roberts told him to do. So he grew up, spiritually speaking, when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, he was trained to understand you can interpret what you're praying in the Spirit about. Yeah, and you can. I mean, I've done that numerous times when I'm praying in the Spirit in my own prayer time. Then I will just ask God, okay, what was what was that about especially if i'm feeling like it's it's something more than just not my normal prayer time and um and he'll let me know you know it's usually interceding for a person or a situation and he'll just say okay yeah you've been praying for this loved one or this situation and so god will give you that but We only have a few minutes left because I know we're already going long. But as you can tell, we have a lot to say using our verbal gift. (laughs) But so when you talk about speaking, speaking in tongues, we're trying to make it clear when you're praying to the Lord, you can pray in tongues. And it's not, so to speak, a giving a prophetic word or interpreting it for the church. But you can interpret. People say, how do you interpret? I just speak in English when I pray in tongues and I just begin to speak in English. And mm-hmm. it flows out the interpretation of what I just said in tongues. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's just praise to God. Yeah. It really is. It's yeah. praising God. Yeah. And that's awesome. Can't get enough of that. So if we dive into 1 Corinthians 14 and we look at this, there's five things I came up with. You could come up with more if you guess you want of why you want to speak in tongues. Okay. So you want to talk about that and then we'll go back to what the interpretation of tongues are. So No, you can go back to interpret. No. Go ahead. You interpret, <laughs> interpret this tongue. Ha, da, da, da. Interpret the tongue. Go ahead. Go I ahead. have no idea <laughs> where we're going. No, we are now talking about the gift, the diverse speaking in tongues or the diversity of tongues. And I will say, and I know we referred to this in our previous podcast, Listen to Derek Prince. He has passed away, but you can find his teachings on YouTube. I'm sure they're available other places. But he breaks these down, and he gives the explanation of what we're trying to convey, the difference between the supernatural spiritual gifts of uh, diverse of tongues and interpretation of tongues versus praying in tongues that we all receive upon being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So it's just taking it to the next level. It's another level. Just like we're all given the gift of, we're all given faith. When we believe, we have faith. It takes faith to believe. But there is a gift of faith that comes in in certain situations and circumstances like we talked about George Mueller. So I think that helps to explain. So you often find speaking in tongues, the gift of tongues, and interpretation of tongues go together because really that's the only time that gift, spiritual gift of interpretation of tongues comes into play is when there has been um, the diversity of tongues given specifically in a uh, 
a service or when you're with a group of people and you start speaking in tongues, then there will be an interpretation of tongues. So those go hand in hand. And we've had multiple examples of this. We had a lady in our church that was in Russia and yeah. uh, she understood English and she understood Russian and she was in this very remote uh, village church in Siberia. Mm -hmm. And she was there and this girl began to speak in English prophetically. And our friend who knew Russian knew that this girl did not know English, yeah. but she spoke perfect English, mm -hmm. praising God, yeah. thanking God and worshiping God. And she tells us, she would tell us this story. Yeah. And we were all just amazed that God would use the English language, but obviously the little girl that was speaking in, in the Russian girl would not mm -hmm. know how to speak in English. And that's the language God used to give her her, her uh, tongue through. Yeah. So that is one example. And you'll see this also if you are in a church service. It's happened a couple services that I've been a part of, um, not a frequent thing, yep. but where one person will all of a sudden start speaking loudly in tongues. When that person finishes, then there needs to be in that circumstance an interpretation of tongues, yep. sometimes given by that person, or it can be given by somebody else. But that's yep. how you'll see most times those gifts operate together. Yeah, there was an example, I think we talked about this in pre-broadcast, my dad was attending an Assembly of God church in Tampa, Florida. He and my mom and Pastor Ed, they, a, a person began to speak in tongues loudly, and this happens quite frequently a lot of times in Assembly of God churches, and we appreciate that gift. And so, this person began to stop the service and began to pray out loud mm -hmm. or speak out loud in tongues. And so Pastor Ed asked my dad to come up. And so my dad came up and he says, I need you to get the interpretation. Well, after this individual finished, my dad then began to speak out what the interpretation was of that tongue. Well, what was so amazing <laughs> was the person who gave the tongue did not know, but it was like an old style of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple Spanish people in the congregation who heard that. And they came up to my dad afterwards and said, you know, said, Pastor Joe said, you did an amazing job of interpreting in English what that person was stay saying in that old style of Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. So these people actually understood yeah. Spanish and were able, so they knew what the person that was speaking in tongues was saying because they understood that language. And when your dad gave the interpretation in English, they were able to say, yeah, that's exactly what was said. I think that's so cool. Yeah, there's, there's all kind of examples about this, but I just want to encourage you that tongues and interpretation of tongues, a lot of times the Bible tells us it's a sign for unbelievers mm -hmm. that people get, uh, they get rattled. We just heard a story about a guy that was, came in and heard these people speak in his dialect and he was blown away that his sins of his heart were being discussed publicly <laughs> by this person speaking in tongues. And he had to be convinced the person doing the speaking in tongues did not know that language. Yeah, I think it was Welsh, which is not yeah. a very common yeah. language like Spanish or French or English. So, yeah. yeah. So, but that is different. And that's why it says when you read the scriptures, we just share with you, it says diverse kinds of tongues. So sometimes it's another language that is known on the earth but sometimes it is an unknown language and that's part of what you're going to refer to so maybe we can finish up in a couple minutes time try of talking about the purpose of uh speaking in tongues the gift of tongues uh, in first corinthians 14. well this is again two different two different uses it's like if you were if you were praying and you had a really big burden on your heart a lot of times in my experiences, people don't want to share the huge burdens of their heart with everybody. They just say either have a close personal friend or maybe not at all, but it's between them and the Lord and they take those burdens to the Lord. And when you pray in the spirit, that is a relief of your burdens, your cares that you're sharing with the Lord. But speaking in tongues prophetically to speak as in give a mm -hmm. tongue and interpretation, we're told it's for the edification of the church. Mm -hmm. So you are speaking to other people. And so a lot of times you're not sharing with them your burdens. You're speaking to them, as it says in verse three, either for edification, exhortation, or comfort. Those mm -hmm. are the things that you can use. So anytime you hear people get up, and I've got lots of stories we could go through this. I've heard lots of, I mean, just been in the charismatic movement for over 40 years. And I can just tell you, there are tons of times we've heard people 
get up and give prophecies or give tongues. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's just that believer exercising their gift. The Bible says, according to Romans 12, that you prophesy according to your faith mm -hmm. or to the gift of faith you have or the level of faith. And so uh, for some people, like the Lord may give them a word, like God may give me a word uh, for Pastor Dina. I may just all the faith I have is to say, hey, the Lord wants you to know he loves you. Mm -hmm. The Lord would say to you, my daughter, I love you. And you would exercise that. Well, you're exercising your faith. But as you go on, even the prophet Isaiah started off small. And towards the end of the book, man, the dudes are given whole chapters of prophetic words. Well, he's exercising his faith. His gift is growing. So if you don't use it, you lose it. So we would encourage you, <laughs> begin to speak in tongues, begin to prophesy, begin to interpret, begin to do those things. Step out. Let God use you. Go up to someone and just, and just say, I feel like the Lord's got a word of encouragement for you. I feel like the Lord's got a word of comfort for you. Just to me, that's such a joy to watch Jesus meet the needs of his people. So saying that, what happens when you get two pastors together on a podcast? We talk and we go over time. So I am going to hold off these five things that we get uh, that you were going to cover. It's going to be 1 Corinthians 14. So we're going to come back with part two of this will be our next episode. And we will finish covering what that spiritual gift of speaking in tongues is and what it brings to the body and then we will jump into prophecy which is what you are beginning to touch on so these all go together they all have that great purpose of helping the local church it's for the common good god gives us gifts because he wants us to use them for his kingdom because as i said pr previously god desires that all would be saved. So we're going to come back to this on our next podcast. Until then, God bless. Thank you for joining us. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you liked what you heard today, please consider donating. You can support C3 by clicking the giving button on our homepage at cccsc.org or by texting CCCSC to 833-257-5698. Thanks again and have an awesome day. And remember, God has a great plan for your life.